Get ready to match the stars. Robert Vaughn. Brett Summers. McLean Stevenson. So, Richard Dawson. And Betty White. As we play the star studded Big Money Match Game 73. wardrobe this week. <laughs> I tell you, the guys got tired of lending me stuff. Bob said, absolutely no more. This is it. <laughs> Dickie said, forget it. The white tie was it. Now, this is it for me, folks. I got the And I don't tie. want my dress all sweated up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you put, you put the jacket on him there. I'll do the shirt, my shirt's, uh, shoulder and my shirt's, uh, I can't, can't even talk. Okay. I don't want to get it, uh, sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> can we get this, uh, that's pretty good. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Jim. Jim. Dayton. Dayton Anderson, would you bring me another jacket from the dressing room, please, wherever you are? Hurry. Gene. Yes. Well, we got to move on. I got to get him over to the Largo. Okay. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's welcome our two players, shall we? Ellen Hoey and Charlene Jameson. Charlene has won $1,200. How about that? It's terrific. That is terrific. And Ellen is challenging her. We finished round one, didn't we? And you just throw it on the set here. Oh, that's it. Just throw it over here. No, don't, not on the floor. Uh, gee, you, know, no, you never learned uh, how to throw gee, a jacket, did you? Listen, could I wear that one? This one's a little itchy, man. <laughs> All right, but it is... It's kind of a woolly. It's too itchy for you. Okay. All right, just slip that one out. Talk there, about huh? no shame. Boy, you really do get them sweaty, don't you? Okay. Goes better with a tie. Goes better with a tie, yeah. As if he'd know. And as if, and as I was saying, Ellen was challenging Charlene and uh, seems to be doing well. Four to two at the end of round one. And ladies, we'll start round two right after we give these messages. All right, here we go, ladies. I'll push the button. And we'll reveal the questions and ask our challenger, Ellen, to make a selection. B. B is what she wants. Last time out, you matched four celebrities. Oh. Now you'll be trying to match the other two. They are Robert and McLean. <laughs> yeah, frickin' crack. <Frank. laughs> Dummy and no clothes. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, this is it. <laughs> After his, his, <laughs> after his historic ride, Paul Revere said, Boy, is my blank tired. <laughs> Paul Revere said that. Did you hear that, Ellen? Not quite. I will repeat it for your benefit. After his historic ride, Paul Revere said, Boy, is my blank tired. <laughs> No pictures, McLean. Just simple statement, a declarative fact. He's worried about oh. spelling. Here we go. Now, they're finished, Ellen. It's up to you to give us your response now. Paula Revere said, boy, is my... Fanny tired. Fanny tired, is what she said. Dealing with Robert and McLean, that's what she says. What did you say? I'd say it's the same thing. That's it. He says, but, Fanny, there's one match for you, Ellen. And McLean, looks like... Oh, do do bird and ding dong do. Yeah, there it is. Right. Another match. So your work is cut out for you, Charlene. You must match the remaining celebrities. You match Nancy and Richard the first round. This round, you've got to match the other four, all of them. Here we go. Once upon a time, there was a pigeon who was so rich, he had his own blank. <laughs> His own what? First time His own blank. blank. Oh. 
Once upon a time, there was a pigeon. And he had his own. Who was so rich, he had his own blame. Oh, yes, you, Robert. You, Brent, and McLean. Oh. Everyone but Nancy and Richard. Come, <laughs> Kurt. <laughs> Does anybody know where Goodwill is? <laughs> yes, I do. And I'm going to take you there because I know you could do an improvement. Okay. Now, Charlene, once upon a time there was a pigeon who was so rich he had his own apartment. <laughs> apartment. All right. One miss. And the game is over. Robert. Well, it is a pigeon's apartment. It's a coop. A coop. Does that match? <laughs> yes, it does. Okay. There's one match. Brett? I'm not sure whether this matches or not, but I assume it does. His own General Grant tomb. Oh. <laughs> not a match. So Ellen Hoey is the winner. Congratulations. Could you come around, please? Okay, Ellen, right here. Hundred dollars for you and stand by for a moment. We've got to have a word or two with Charlene, who uh, will be leaving us now. But she'll be richer by one thousand two hundred dollars. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Charlene. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye. There goes Charlene. That's enough waving. Yeah, that's... <laughs> okay. Now you know how this goes, don't you? Yep. You ready for it? Yep. Okay. <laughs> We polled a recent studio audience. We got their best response to this. Broad blank. Broad blank. Broad blank. I don't know how you want to accent it or pronounce it. Now, the answer that audience gave most often is worth $500 to you, Ellen, if you can match it. The second most frequent oh, response, you. $250, and the third, $100. You're allowed a little help from the celebrities, so choose one at a time and see what you can do. Betty, I find just the way it is. Uh, Broadway, I think. Broadway. Broadway. There's one answer. Another one. Uh, well, I'm kind of scared of McLean, but I'll try. <laughs> McLean, you're right you to be scared. You don't have to be afraid of me, honey. I said broad. You said Broadway. <laughs> I said broad jump. <laughs> Those people are vicious. <laughs> No, they're just 40 broad jumpers in the audience there. Competed in the Olympics. One more. Robert. They said both of them, but I have to change my mind. Broadside. Broadside, he says. So you've got Broadway, broad jump, and broadside. You may give us one of those as your answer, or think up another one. What would you like to do? Broadway. Broadway is the answer she chooses. The one that Betty White gave you. Let's find out where it is, shall we? We're looking for Broadway. May we see the $100 response? Broad-minded is a pretty good answer that nobody thought of, I think. Okay. Still looking for Broadway. Here is the $250 response. Broad jump is up there. That's the one that's the McLean's answer. Okay. Third and last chance. Now, Ellen, to look for Broadway. Here is the $500 response. Broadway, you've got it. All right, Betty, well done. No, Ellen, you've got, you're up to $600. You just won the $500 here. That means you play for 10 times that amount or $5,000. Now, to collect, you have to have a head-to-head -head match with one celebrity, and it must be an exact match. Please choose one now. Stick with my winner, Betty. Going to stick with the winner, Betty, she says. All right, Betty, get ready to write. Ellen faces me. Here is the $5,000 question. Whipped blank. All right, did the dinger sound? But she's ready anyway. Betty has finished her answer, and uh, there's the dinger, and now we ask for your response here. Whipped blank, Ellen. Cream. Cream is her answer. Cream seems to be the popular answer for the audience for $5,000. Betty, what have you got? Get back up there! Get back up there! Get 
got his clothes on and you're thinking that way. Well, how do you feel? Oh, <laughs> just fine. Are you excited? Yes. Well, I guess you should be because you're up to... Oh, well, dear. You better hang on to something here. She's really trembling. You've got $5,600 and you're going to play another game in a minute or two. We'll give you a chance to rest while you read these messages. All right, we're ready to start a brand new game and we've got a brand new challenger here. Let's welcome Mr. Steve May. Hi, Steve. Hi. How are you? You know Ellen? Yes. Steve... Uh, Tell the folks around here a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm studying acting. I want to be an actor. And uh, I also take real estate in case it doesn't pan out. <laughs> you take real estate? Yes. Who do you take it from? <laughs> Anybody I can. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's called it. Is that all you have to that's, say about that's yourself? That's about it. That's I'm it. Pretty yeah. boring guy. Okay. Good luck to you, Steve. Now, we'll begin by pushing the button, revealing two questions here, and you make a selection. Uh, I'll take B. He wants B. New game, folks. Okay. Barbara went to the zoo and was blanked by a gorilla. <laughs> you hit my persitis. Oh, I'm sorry. You hit it for me. <laughs> Barbara went to the zoo and was blanked by a gorilla. <laughs> I'm coming. All right, I won't watch if you'll. It makes you. me so nervous. Okay, I'll stand over here while you're writing. Well, that's that claim makes me nervous. Oh, all right. <laughs> now everybody's ready. So, Steve, we call on you. Barbara went to the zoo and was. I was gonna say raped, but I'm gonna say <laughs> say grabbed. Grabbed, grabbed yeah. by a gorilla. Yes. Barbara was grabbed by a gorilla. It's difficult, you know, behind the glass and through the bars and all that, but that's what he says there. What do you Well, saying? if she was grabbed, then she must have been... Scared. Scared. Scared by a gorilla. No good. Okay. Brett, what did you say? What about that? She was chased and caught and had the best time of her life. <laughs> okay, McLean. I'm going to get a... But I said kiss. Kiss by a gorilla. There it is. <laughs> I hate that person that does that. Yes. No, you don't. You just hate dear. the sound. He's not a bad person. He's a nice person? Yes, he's a nice person. No, he's not a nice person, but he's yes. not a bad person. Well, that's uh, Iris Kutch, a producer who does that. Oh, he's there. a great guy. Yeah, he's a great guy. <laughs> <laughs> he makes a lot of sound, but that's he the way it is. By a gorilla? Yeah, no, you know. Nancy, what did you say? I said, I said. Grabbed is his answer. I said. Hugged. Hugged and grabbed. How about that, Judge? There's a man. Please score once with that. What about you, sir? Two hugs. Another hug. I'll grab a... That's enough of that. Oh. No, no, that's... Uh, Don't yes, right. protecting her from the gorilla. Okay. <laughs> Betty White. I'll take the gorilla. <laughs> Don't you be there. <laughs> Listen, if you ain't tried it, don't knock it. I said mugged. Mugged. No, mugged is... Oh, mugged. No, mugged. No, no, no. no. Grabbed, that's different mugged. from grabbing and hugging and all Here's that. Me. So that's two for you, Steve. And let's see what we've got for Ellen here. Okay. When Rodney refused to pay the gypsy fortune teller, she screamed, May a hornet fly into your blank. <laughs> you remember Rodney? Yeah. You don't remember Rodney? No. Refused to pay the gypsy fortune teller. And she said, May a hornet fly into your blank. Oh, she said it or he said it? No, she said it. She oh. said it. <laughs> Honestly, it's not easy up here, Gene. I'm sorry, Gene. <laughs> Hardly seems possible. We've only been at sea three days. <laughs> All right, Ellen, how do you respond to this? When Rodney refused to pay the gypsy, the fortune teller, she screamed, May a hornet fly into your... Jockey shorts. <laughs> No wonder she won $5,600. Okay, she said jockey shorts. Well, fortunately, dirty Ellen and I think alike. Drawers. There's a match. Well, I'll be done. What do you say, Brett? I think Ellen is deranged, and I think Robert Vaughn is dumb. Underwear. That's another match. Join the club. I'll tell you what I think, Alan. <laughs> That's what I think of her. Jockey shorts! Jockey shorts! Right I came right out with it. 
<laughs> Nancy, are you yes? going to keep it going here? Oh, real close. Nose. <laughs> May a hornet fly into your looking. nose. Yeah, that would sting. That, that would hurt. Smart. How about you, sir? Well, that's the only way, unless they pull the jockey shorts up here. <laughs> El Nozo. Yeah. All right. Betty White, jockey shorts is the answer thing. we're looking for. Do you sometimes wonder what you're doing here? Jockey shorts. Yeah. yeah. So at the end of round one, it's four to two in favor of the champ. We'll start round two right after we pass these. Now we're ready to go on here with this game in which our current champion is ahead, four to two. We'll start round two by asking Steve to make a decision here. Mm, I think I'll go for A. You go for A. Yeah. All right. Steve, the aspiring actor, wanted A, and this is what he got. The tourist at Mount Rushmore said, Look at that. George Washington's nose is blank. I don't write. You don't write? He doesn't write. You're the only two. The others all write. We're the best. You match the first round, so therefore you will not participate in the second round. Does that mean we're not the best? You're the best. Thank you. Yeah. The tourist at Mount Rushmore said, look at that. George Washington's nose is... Hold on now. Now, Brett's all ready, so we'll call on Steve for his response. The tourist at Mount Rushmore said, look at that, George Washington's nose is... Cracked. <clears throat> cracked, like my voice. Cracked. Right. He said his nose is cracked. Mm. He is a good actor. <laughs> he is, yeah. Cracked what, his voice. What, what, what did he say? Cracked. Cracked? Okay. Cracked. That's what he said. Possibly they think I want to keep with the smut thing. Dirty. George Washington's nose is dirty there. Okay, Brett. George Washington's nose is covered with pigeon droppings. <laughs> now, is that wrong? That's right. I don't know if there are any pigeons right. around Mount Rushmore, but that's... Why not? The They're point. everywhere. Steve, <laughs> you must match the two remaining celebrities, McLean and Betty, in order to stay in the game. Let's see if it happens. Cracked is his answer, McLean. Good. Mine's running. Running. So, welcome to the game. Congratulations. Can you come down, please? It's getting to be a familiar spot for you, isn't it? Okay, Steve, uh, we're going to say goodbye to you. We have enjoyed meeting you, and uh, thank you for joining us here on Match Game 73, a gift for Steve Nave back. Goodbye, Steve. You know how this goes, so let's fiddle around. You know, let's get right to it, right? All right. All right. We polled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. <laughs> Blank drum. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500, too, if you can match it, $250 and $100. And a little help from the celebrities, if you please. Betty. Oh, Betty White. Sweetie. Blank drum. Uh, bass drum. Bass drum is what she says. Richard. What's your dog? Ear drum. Ear drum? Pardon? <laughs> Ear drum is your answer. Robert. Hum. Hum drum, he says. Oh, hum drum. So you got bass drum, ear drum, and hum drum. You may choose one of those or give us one of your own. But now we have to call for an answer, Ellen. Which one will it be? Bass drum. You say bass drum. You think she's right? You're going to find out right now. Here we go. We're looking for bass drum. May we see the $100 response? Humdrum. That was his answer. That was Robert Vaughn's answer. Okay. Now, we're still looking for bass drum. May we see the $250 response? Eardrum is up there. The one that Richard Dawson gave you. Pardon? Last chance for bass drum. Here is the $500 response. Bass drum! <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, so she's got the $500 and you've got this message and then you hurry right back. Don't we make a lovely couple? We got caught on stage together, so we're just going to stand here together and say goodbye together. Listen, uh, next time we get together, you're going to have a go at over at $5,000. So you'll come back next time. And uh, we will look forward to seeing all of your bodies sometime in the very near future. Well, right, right, right.
that's enough. <laughs> oh, Mr. I liked him better we'll in his jacket. We'll see you on MASH and you here and you there, and we'll see all of you one place or another. That's it. Where? And Betty White. <laughs> Wow. You're you're on the Mary Tyler Moore show uh, yes, coming up very my soon, third right? One. Yes. Your third one. Third one. Gee, that's terrific. So and you, she's very terrific on it. And you're terrific and I love your cuffs. Well, thank you. Ring for service, <laughs> the sign says. Okay, we will. Just a small now, bar listen, I have. Uh, if you if, if you'll all <laughs> tune in next time, we're gonna have this galaxy of stars. Robert Q. Lewis, Brett Summers, Maury Amsterdam. Joyce Boulafont, Richard Dawson, and Ann Elder. Gene Rayburn saying so long for match game 73. Join us next time. We this is Johnny Olsen speaking for match game 73. A Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. <laughs> Stay tuned for Secret Storm next over most of these CBS stations. Jockey shorts is the answer we're looking for. Do you sometimes wonder what you're doing here? Jockey shorts. Yeah. Yeah. So at the end of round one, it's four to two in favor of the champ. We'll start round two right after we pass these. Now we're ready to go on here with this game in which our current champion is ahead, four to two. We'll start round two by asking Steve to make a decision here. Mm -hmm. I think I'll go for A. You go for A. Yeah. All right. Steve, the aspiring actor, wanted A, and this is what he got. The tourist at Mount Rushmore said, Look at that. George Washington's nose is blank. I don't write. You don't write? He doesn't write. You're the only two. The others all write. We're the best. <laughs> you match the first round, so therefore you will not participate in the second round. Does that mean we're not the best? You're the best. Thank you. Yeah. The tourist at Mount Rushmore said, look at that. George Washington's nose is... Hold on now. Now, Brett's right. all ready, so we'll call on Steve for his response. The tourist at Mount Rushmore said, look at that, George Washington's nose is... Cracked. <clears throat> cracked, like my voice. Cracked. Right. He said his nose is cracked. Mm. He is a good actor. He is, yeah. <laughs> cracked his voice. Well, what, what did he say? Cracked. <laughs> cracked. Okay. Cracked. That's what he said. I want to keep the smut thing. It's dirty. George Washington's nose is dirty there. Okay, Brett. George Washington's nose is covered with pigeon droppings. Now, is that wrong? That's right. I don't know if there are any it's pigeons right. around Mount Rushmore, but that's... Why not? The They're point. everywhere. Steve, you must match the two remaining celebrities, McLean and Betty, in order to stay in the game. Let's see if it happens. Cracked is his answer, McLean. Good. Mine's running. Running. So welcome to the game. Congratulations. Can you come down, please? <laughs> Getting to be a familiar spot for you, isn't it? Okay, Steve, uh, we're going to say goodbye to you. We have enjoyed meeting you, and uh, thank you for joining us here on Match Game 73, a gift for Steve Nave backstage. Goodbye, Steve. You know how this goes, so let's fiddle around, you know, let's get right to it, right? All right. All right. We polled a recent studio audience, and we got their best response to this. Blank drum. Now, the answer they gave most often is worth $500, too, if you can match it, $250 and $100. And a little help from the celebrities, if you please. Betty. Oh, Betty White. Sweetie. Blank drum. Uh, bass drum. Bass drum is what she says. Richard. What's your dog? Eardrum. Eardrum? Pardon? <laughs> Eardrum is your answer. Robert. Hum. Humdrum, he says. Oh, hum Humdrum. So you got bass drum, eardrum, and humdrum. You may choose one of those or give us one of your own. But now we have to call for an answer, Ellen. Which one will it be? Bass drum. You say bass drum. You think she's right? You're going to find out right now. Here we go. 
We're looking for bass drum. May we see the $100 response? Humdrum. That was his answer. That was Robert Vaughn's answer. Okay. Now, we're still looking for bass drum. May we see the $250 response? Eardrum is up there. The one that Richard Dawson gave you. Pardon? Last chance for bass drum. Here is the $500 response. Bass drum! Congratulations. Okay, so she's got the $500, and you've got this message, and then you hurry right back. Don't we make a lovely couple? We got caught on stage together, so we're just going to stand here together and say goodbye together. Listen, uh, next time we get together, you're going to have a go at over at $5,000. So you'll come back next time, and uh, we will look forward to seeing all of your bodies sometime in the very near future. Right, right, right. Enough. <laughs> oh, I like him better in we'll his jacket. We'll see you on MASH and you here and you there, and we'll see all of you one place or another. That's it. Where? And Betty White, what? you're you're on the Mary Tyler Moore show. Uh, yes. Coming I'm, up very my soon, third right? Third one. Yes. Your third one. Third one. Gee, that's terrific. Sorry. And you're, she's very terrific on it. And you're terrific, and I love your cuffs. Well, thank you. Ring for service. <laughs> the sign says. Okay, we will. Just a small now, bar listen. I have. Uh, if, you, if, if you'll all tune in next time, we're going to have this galaxy of stars. Robert Q. Lewis, Brett Summers, Maury Amsterdam, Joyce Boulefant, Richard Dawson, and Ann Elder. Gene Rayburn saying so long for Match Game 73. Join us next time. We this is Johnny Olson speaking for Match Game 73. A Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. <laughs> Stay tuned for Secret Star next over most of the CBS stations. to match the star, Bert Crombie, Brett Summers, Charles Nelson Riley, Lee Merriweather, Richard Dawson, and Gail Fisher as we play the star-studded Big Money Match Game 74. And now here's the host of Match Game 74, Gene Ray. Everybody had a good day yesterday watching the uh, Rose Bowl Parade on CBS and watching all the bowl games and all that. And now here we are into uh, uh, where, are, where we are. Anyway, and they said it wouldn't last, and here we are in match game 74. And we thank you all for joining us, and you especially because we couldn't do it without you. You're a gifted Look what bunch. I found from last you found a little year. heart at your chair. <laughs> See how I feel about you? <laughs> All right, let's say hello to our two players, Harry Reynolds and Paula Arbaugh. Hello, players. Harry's the current champ. He's won two games, has a total of $450 to his credit. How do you feel about that, Harry? Pretty good. <laughs> so <he's> just, <laughs> losing, huh? Right. How do you feel about that, Paula? Well, he's got four, I got two. Now well, all I right. need is four, right? Right. And he needs none. <laughs> I'm gonna put the evil eye on him. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we're gonna finish this game with round two, I guess it is, right after we pass along this message to you. Here we go with round two, folks. Gonna finish this game. Final round. Paula, it's up to you to make a selection. A again. She wants A. Last time out, you matched Richard and Charles, so the two of you will not participate. Everyone else will, and this is it. Mary said, John, that wasn't the garbage you just threw out. That was my blank. <laughs> Mary said that to John. That wasn't the garbage you just threw out. That was my blank. <laughs> you can take a little nap while you're waiting there. Just doze off for a minute. I Mary. thought he'd been sleeping all week. <laughs> 
Okay. I'm uh, ready. I'm ready. Here we go. Paula, Mary said, John, that wasn't the garbage you just threw out. That was my... Oh, dinner. Dinner. I think it's a good answer. You think that's a good answer? Let's see if it scores for her. Bert, let's see if she matches you. I said lunch. Oh. oh. Can't match lunch and dinner. Sorry, Sorry about, that. about that. Brett. I didn't come anywhere uh, near food. Huh? I said mother. <laughs> Say. No, no. Now, audience, now listen, don't laugh at her. We have to book one weirdo on every show. <laughs> She's a resident weirdo then. Take a, a weirdo to lunch and or dinner. <laughs> okay, now, Paula, you must match uh, 